I think it's important to recognize that this presidential election is a very important step in Egypt's transition, but it is only one, and it's taking place in an environment of incredible uncertainty. It's still not clear, for example, what powers the elected Egyptian president will have because the constitution has yet to be revised or even redrafted. Uh, and it's still not clear who will be in the body that's going to write that constitution. So that's one reason for uncertainty. Another reason for uncertainty is that the Egyptian military, who have been acting as the executive authority ever since the revolution in February of 2011, are still very much uh, an active force in Egyptian society, in the Egyptian economy, and in Egyptian politics. And so any elected president is going to have to reckon with the power of the Egyptian military uh, in Egyptian politics and what that says about the prospects for a real democratic transition. I think in many ways there hasn't been yet a transition toward democracy in Egypt. There are a number of steps that still have to be taken uh, before the possibility of a democratic transition becomes a reality. You know, I think in many ways the United States and Egypt do share deep underlying interests with respect to what happens in the Middle East. Uh, and I think these are interests that are fairly widely shared amongst the Egyptian people in Egyptian society. Uh, the Egyptian people reject terrorism at a higher rate than any other group of citizens in any country in the world. Uh, and that's a strong common interest. Uh, the Egyptian people are concerned to build up their own society, to build up their own economy, to care for their poor. Uh, so they're looking for stability, they're looking for trade, they're looking for investment. These are interests that we share. Uh, and I, I think that going forward, as the United States is able to engage with a fully elected Egyptian government, as the United States is able to broaden its relationship with the Egyptian people through public diplomacy, through exchanges, a variety of means, uh, those common interests will really become the foundation for a cooperative relationship that I think will be much more sustainable and stronger in many ways than the relationship we had with the previous government. I think Israel understands that this is a democratic process and it's going to have to play out and the Egyptian people will make their choice known and that's something that Israelis will have to respect as Democrats themselves. Uh, I, I'm sure that the Israelis hope to build a cooperative relationship, um, but most importantly, I think that, like many Egyptians, they're looking for security and stability uh, inside their own country and on their borders. The Egyptian-Israeli peace treaty has been a bedrock of stability in the Middle East for 30 years, uh, and it's brought tremendous benefits because of that to both Israeli and Egyptian citizens. I think Israeli society and Egyptian society both appreciate that. Uh, and so I expect that that peace treaty is going to continue to be a shared interest. I think the, the greatest danger in the coming period is actually uh, an economic crisis. Because before the revolution and since the revolution, the Egyptian people have been suffering from inflation, from rising prices for food and fuel, from uh, very widespread unemployment, uh, and from very unequal growth in society. Now, the Egyptian government just today announced that they anticipate they're going to have a small degree of economic growth this year, 3 or 4 percent. But the question is, is that kind of growth going to benefit the population in a broad sense, or is it going to be restricted to the benefit of a few? That was one of the issues that led to the revolution. And so a new government, a new president, faces the challenge of ensuring equitable growth, ensuring that there's wider access to economic opportunity. And I think uh, with international support, including financial assistance, uh, an Egyptian government can do that. But if they don't make that their first priority, I think that they're going to be facing a lot of frustration uh, from Egyptians who have been suffering for a long time.